Alright. <coughs> Jesus. Coronavirus. <coughs> Social distancing. Yeah. What? Hey, what? What? It's not the only disease I have. Oh, venereal diseases. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Archie Marathon with Andrew Maynard and Kevin Huey. We are at the 2019? 2019 M Pavilion designed by Glenn Merkett. The Australian, the only Australian Pritzker Prize winner. And Pritzker Prize, for those who don't know, is like the Nobel Prize of architecture. Pavilion is a pretty vague thing, right? It's, and you've got all kinds of national pavilions and things. They do all kinds of stuff. There's no real function to a pavilion. If, some of them don't even shelter, right? So it is to mark a space, to mark a place in some ways. It is, it is vague. And I think you looked at the traditional, the tradition of pavilion. In fact, if anything, this is probably the most pavilion of all pavilions so far as a pavilion which is based on the French word papillon, which is butterfly, this flapping wings, a tent-like structure. So in some ways, this is kind of a simple uh, tent. I think this pavilion thing, this idea of a beautifully detailed little repetition, uh, you know, form, he's very comfortable with, um, and sitting them out in the middle of a paddock somewhere makes it very easy for him to do these very symmetrical, very repeated um, you know, explorations of a section, really. That's what he does so often. I'm exploring this section, I'm going to detail the shit out of every single point around that. Yeah, and, and it is based on the section that he wanted the framing and the view up from yeah. deep inside up to see the buildings in the city behind, over yeah. there, and then also the park. What do you, um, what do you think of it? Look, at first, to be honest, I was a bit disappointed the first when I came here. And I think it's grown on me. I think having spent time here a few days coming here to film, just coming in and out, uh, and watching the light, I think especially, the way that it bounces, the way um, the landscape around it amplifies the um, nature in a very uh, cliche but yeah, yeah it what's, what's your project about it's about nature and <laughs> community oh gosh yeah. <laughs> in some ways the pavilion actually takes a backdrop to it's not a showy piece despite it's it is kind of showy in an architectural way because architects will go oh my god that's beautifully detailed uh, at the same time i think it kind of takes the back seat to the to the setting you know, because he, he talks about the fact that this, rem after his design, that he, he said it reminds him of an experience of uh, in South America being in a light plane and then arrived just uh, to see some Mayan temples, I think, in the jungle. Um, but the landing strip was way too hot and the jungle was full of mosquitoes. They wanted to have lunch somewhere and they huddled underneath the light plane's wing um, and just put down a tablecloth and off they go as a picnic it's a setting the place so he talks about the fact that the paving in some ways is like the tablecloth the other thing about the membranes too so he's it, he's tried membranes for the first time he's worked out what it should do structurally but then he's also used that as this lantern idea so the lantern the boxes but then the entire ceiling space also at night time lights up that's and right it's, it's actually this incredible contrast once it starts getting darker out here um you know i I was saying to Kev earlier, it felt, feels a bit 7-Eleven, a bit like really lit up, supermarket, fluoro light, this dominant It's white. not that But there is something bad. elegant about it. Yeah, it's, it's not a harsh light. It's not a 7-Eleven, oh my God, oh my God. But it is this consistent white, like it's not even like it's... it's it is, very it's very Miesian, it's Miesian. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, you're, that's, that's the polite way of putting it. I well, call it 7-Eleven. Glenn Merkert's work has, has been oh. 
inspired heavily by uh, Means of Underworld's work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where I guess the focus for Glen Merkert has been roofs, the, the roof, the shape, mm. the space underneath the roof, the tectonic of elements and how they join and how they meet mm. and how they sort of end as well. Mm. Detail. Detail. That's what's good about him though, you know, it's the first time he's used the material and you can see he's really exploring it, exactly how to, how to use it. He hasn't gone, he's worked with experts in membrane technology, but he's figured out how it works and then each different spot, the material requires something different. You can see he's actually shifted his detail. So he's got the ceiling, which is a single roll in one direction and that just comes to a tube. But then where he's got these slightly more complex um, geometries or slightly more complex load paths you can see how he's dealing with it um, in a much in a different way he's the detail king really so this is one of the more beautiful parts of the building is this gorgeous little spout but it seems to already be weather protected <laughs> so I don't know why it's there but if you look at the original sketches this was designed as a long um, a long extrusion along one side Wise ideas made to put it at either end so it becomes like a book bookend to the space opening out into the park but also that means that the back edge which is the lantern um, almost acts like a, a sign to the street without actually having signage saying look the end pavilions here what they do also is that they are bracing the system at yeah. the end because it's a long skinny ish building uh, and the weakest direction is the shortest distance and in this case these are welded to the box so it looks like a small column but if you actually look at it we've got an angle on this side all of this is continuously welded that's actually a huge structural element there in fact the whole box acts as yeah. a as a sheer a beam element. across the top you can actually see inside there's just a big thickness of steel through there so that's stopping the building from tipping each way but the same thing is happening with this huge element of steel on one side because we've got no bracing through the middle of it so that's actually bracing it in that direction as well so even though they seem like really quite delicate little boxes that have just been sat at the ends they're doing so much of the grunt work and this is a sail it's an airplane wing so you can imagine when it gets windy this thing's trying to take off and these things are not only holding it to the ground but they're stopping it from twisting and buckling it's actually a pretty clever way of dealing with structure Everywhere else you look, you end up with these big straps across frames like this. You know, to make something seem simple and elegant requires the greatest effort. And so there's been a lot of thought and energy put into how the hell do I stop this thing from blowing away, but um, hide it. Make it so the layperson doesn't even know that it, it's a problem. Seems effortless. Effortless. Yeah. And being effortless requires the greatest amount of effort. <laughs> this is the sad truth. The other thing is if you see the sketches, you see how it's evolved. We were criticizing it before because there wasn't a place for the coffee trolleys. Like, why would you design this thing and not have somewhere where they can be hidden away? Well, you look at the sketches and they actually do fit in to the storage units, but they've been just filled up with random crap. Yeah. So he wanted everything put up on a shelf and then these trolleys to go in, but the trolleys can't fit in there anymore because there's just like boxes. Yeah, and people are lazy. They don't or want they... to have to wheel them in and out every day, every time. People can be lazy or they just don't understand. Sometimes you need to just provide an instruction booklet with buildings you design. Well, I'm sure Glenn does. You pro yeah, this is how you will live in my building. <laughs> Other thing is how important briefing is. Um, you know, there's places where there's uh, security cameras. <laughs> then you've got a security camera that's just off a lump of wood. Um, and this probably, I bet you this keep, keeps working up at night. Um, and that, would be an issue of, of briefing. Like obviously he's thought about what some people would consider small issues like the coffee cart. Um, he would have a detail for that if he knew about it, but somebody's had to come along at the end and retrofit it. And the bins as well, you know, you, would, you could think that, well, they kind of designed ish, but they could have been in the end walls somehow, just two slots and they can just chuck the rubbish in. Yeah. Be quite Again. elegantly done, potentially. Yeah, 
just these individual boxes are good for you know, students or anybody that's interested to walk around, actually have a look at the way materials put together. Um, you can see how hard he's worked to get, you know, to make this seem like it's a very thin, you know, plate of steel, which it is, but then he's detailed that in and continuously welded. So he's got some structural thickness in there. That's actually quite a solid structural element, but he's made it look really straightforward, really thin. Um, and that happens, and he's expressed a joint through there. Like, so that sort of stuff requires thought. And it's really important, I think, for the students to go around and just look at the way that everything connects together, because it's pretty easy to draw a box, but then actually, how do you build the damn thing? How do you make it? Um, and also buildability as well. How do you get a weld, you know, how do you weld inside or put a screw in certain places? You see that all the time, people drawing, oh, I want screws doing this. It's like, I can't get a tool in there to make that. Uh, one of the best things about Glenn Merkett is he thinks about how to make uh, the building so if anyone wanted to learn, I think the good thing to do is come around here and draw it in plan, draw it in section, trying to draw it properly. Draw the details. Like if you look at, like all of his sketches of this building and every building he's done um, are readily available. And if you have a look, he draws an overall section. But within that, it's not like Carlos Scarpa used to do. Carlos Scarpa would draw um, everything on one page. So you can actually find these drawings. But um, I think the great thing about what Kev tries to do with Archie Marathon is it's like you are here now, try to um, retroactively um, pull the building apart and draw it again. That's a really generous way of, of learning. It's already here. Now step backwards and work out, you know, pick, a, pick it apart. And trying to work out why the architect did what he or she did. Why did they choose that, make that decision? Yeah. I just don't quite the, get the paving as well as the, the white pebbles that's here. I mean, I can see the idea that it is actually for drainage, right? The, the water comes down, it's permeable, it's not going to the grass. You've got somewhere to cross, although people will just walk on these anyway. Um, but it's just a little bit homogenous the way that it goes all the way through and the way that the columns land on the uh, paving, even though it's got a different strip where the, where the structure sits on, it just needed this, his idea of the landscape coming, you know, you, you're placing something on the landscape. This feels a little bit heavy handed. And the white pebbles, are, uh, whilst it's functional and it bounces beautiful light, it doesn't seem to have that uh, idea of the landscapes actually underneath this, that you're actually stepping on a special piece as much as it could be. When you're here, um, you probably will notice that there's these two little cables on each column and they're on the southern columns, not on the northern columns. And what's actually hidden up in the building is um, <coughs> coronavirus. <coughs> hidden coronavirus? Yes, yes. So up when you, in the ceiling. When you press a button, it all drops on you. So two cables leading up to a screen. So you can actually press a button and drop down um, a screen beautifully detailed in the way that it hits here. I agree with Kev that this is a bit simple um, and that means that if there's a big galing wind, gale force wind, you can actually close off one side, the southern side, which is where you know the cold wind comes from obviously, and still have a functioning space. That's And just like you know any good design, if you don't need it, it kind of just disappears. So you don't even know it's there. It actually took us a while to realize, we, uh, what are these for? Oh, look at all that functionality. If you don't need the function, it's gone. This building, I think, is pretty easy to attack as being something that's, um, you know, has been boring. Um, what's it offering? The, the other pavilions were more interesting. Um, I don't think that's fair at all. I think we're actually showing uh, what, what's been illustrated here is an architect who is being generous in many ways, who doesn't have anything to prove and he's trying to make it more about the landscape and it's the the generosity is hidden within the detailing of this building uh, it's a quiet building um, and I think Melbourne needs a bit of that we've got a lot of loud buildings and it's interesting having this different sensibility um, given to us and I think the general public probably at first sight I've been told that uh, by uh, some of the staff working here that Visitors are saying this is the least uh, favourite 
Mm. And pavilions um, they've come across but I think as you said I think people look for this uh, showy piece of architecture whereas this one here yeah, it's very easy to go I don't know I'm not excited about it but uh, if you look deeper there's actually a lot of things going on and especially for architects uh, there's a lot to learn in a building like this I can't disagree with the general public view. Like I can imagine as a layperson coming along, you would sort of go, well, this is a white tensile building. Why didn't you just hire a marquee? Like I actually can't begrudge them for, for, for mm. questioning that. And I, I, I think this may be more of a, a structure for architects to enjoy. Or you could also say, could the marquee people <coughs> actually do a better detail? that can be made, man manufactured. Oh, that's an interesting one. I wonder if, yeah, people that create wedding marquees have come and taken photos and borrowed ideas. Because, yeah, there's lessons here. Hmm. You, you guys know that we can see the data, can't you? We know you're watching these videos and there's a lot of you. Yeah, you people at the back that haven't subscribed. Please subscribe. And leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the 2019 M Pavilion by Glenn Merkett. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Put it in the and comments below. Add it in those comments. Let us know. We love your comments. Um, and yeah, like the video. We're going to do a Q&A at some point, right? Yeah, we need comments. Uh, we've got some great comments so far. Thank you to those that have submitted. And we're going to do a Q&A video coming up soon. And thank you to everybody that uh, has written to us about sponsoring. We'll get back to you soon. Uh, anybody else thinking of uh, sponsoring a video, then uh, Write to Kev, his email's in the comments. Love y'all. Finger pointing. Oh, lots of fingers. <laughs> oh no, don't put that in. I hate it. It's uh. so going in. <laughs>